Hi, my name is Robert. This video is designed to give you step-by-step -step detailed instructions on completing the task at hand. Please read the comments in the About section of this video. It has valuable information and updates. My YouTube channel has a disclaimer video that I encourage you to watch. And please, like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. Getting ready to tear into my plasma. Samsung TV. Turned it on. A... Uh, couple minutes later heard a pop now when it's plugged in it just clicks as if it's trying to turn itself on so let's see what's going on these are the tools and equipment I used on my failed attempt to fix the uh, TV I got the solder iron the solder a little snip a little uh, spool of that stuff that absorbs solder Phillips screwdriver and these uh, capacitors the capacitors have the ratings along the top of them so I had three different type of capacitors okay I got the back end set off I don't see anything that looks obviously burnt I'm gonna get my own meter and check a couple of these fuses like right there looks like some kind of fuse there there's a few of those but I do notice that some of these capacitors are swollen the heads of them are swollen and from my experience that's not good those are probably burnt need to be replaced I don't know if any of those would have made the popping sound but I'm probably going to try to get a few of those capacitors, replace those, and go from there. So, this board comes directly off of the power lead down here. So, I'm going to unplug the wire plugs that go to it. And then get on the back side of them and remove those capacitors with the uh, solder and iron. The ideal thing would be to find one of these control boards for this TV and replace it the whole power section of it that I'm looking at right now but as cheap as 42 inch LED TVs are that part would have to be a hundred dollars or less for me to take that risk on replacing just that part okay I removed this power board from the TV when I look on the back of it I can see something burnt right there on the back of this uh, power board so I'm gonna look close at a few other things I'm gonna carry this with me to an electronic store and see if I might be able to order one of these or at least these things that show evidence of damage okay I got on eBay and seen a couple of sellers offering a repair kit for this board here uh, one was $11 shipped and they went up to about $30 different amount of parts and different ones These capacitors are bad. I know so I went to a local electronic store and bought all the parts. I could and Here's my ticket there 1887 they did not have this transistor it's some high voltage transistor Went to Radio Shack, they didn't have it. Anyway, the transistor is something like 9 volts, 500 watt, or something like that. Anyway, uh, the guy at the electronics store said maybe you just blew the solder off of it. As you can see right there, it's burnt. So I'm going to re-solder that. These capacitors is probably what's stopping it from coming on. So I'm going to replace these four capacitors uh, with the parts I got and then uh, and go from there. So let me go ahead and do that and put the set back together. Now I asked the guys at the electronic store about a desoldering tool, make it a little easier to take the solder off the back of these boards. And they sold me this stuff here which they said is similar to desoldering. You put this little copper looking material on top of your solder, you heat it, and it sucks the solder up into it. So I have like five foot of that, uh, 1.5 meter, and that should last me quite a while. So that's what I'm gonna use to desolder it, and maybe I'll show you how that works. If you can, without damaging your board, it's better to just wiggle these and break these off and then uh, uh, take them out one at a time with the solder just push them out 
and maybe you can slide a knife or something under there and cut the little legs off of them but make sure you don't damage your board so this stuff works pretty good with getting the solder out of the off the board as you can see what I do I take the I set the copper looking stuff on top of the hole where the solder is then I push the solder iron on top of it like that and it absorbs the solder off of the board so this was kind of hard to do kind of like metal got uh, burnt from inside the control board but I tried to re-solder that uh, re uh, transistor that was burnt on the bottom of the board so we'll see if that helps me out there at all now when you put these capacitors on uh, as you can see on the base of it it has a, a a lined area and a clear area and when you look at the capacitors they have that negative on one side and I guess this side would be positive anyway the side with the dashes on it or the negative side is the side that matches with the dark area so as you can see down there there's a dark ring and I got the dashes on the capacitor there this side has the dark rings has the dashes on the capacitor and so on and so forth so I have the negative on this side dashes on this side dashes on this side dashes on this side so they'll be reversed going in to one way to the other way okay I have all those last four capacitors soldered in now I'm gonna go ahead and snip the uh, wires off of them and I need to hold those because they're blasting across the room okay I got all the capacitors replaced to this way to that way and got these two facing each other because of the black rings and those in uh, Resoldered that hopefully that won't stop this thing from working and if these fuses were blown I think they would actually turn brown I was going to put an ohm meter on them and test them but left my ohm meter in the car I believe so I'm going to go ahead and put this board back on the back of the TV screw it in plug it in put the TV back together and see if it works okay when you're looking at ordering a re replacement board or parts for the board you want to look along the edge and up there is where I found my actual part number for the board so it's a BN44-00161A so on eBay, there were people selling the entire board for anywhere from $60 to $80. People that was offering to repair my board for me, if I ship it in, they fix it, ship it back for $70. And then there was some new boards coming from out of the country for as, as high as $150. So if you got a good set, it's probably worth fixing it versus trying to replace the whole set. Next, I'm putting my connectors back on. They snap in place. I'm not going to push too hard not to damage anything. And to get these off, you squeeze them. Squeeze the tabs and that releases them so you can pull them off. So I got one there, one there, one there, one there, and one there. And then I could put the back back on the TV. Well, I plugged the TV in, and I got fireworks, so I'm going to order another board for it. Well, I'm kind of sorry I didn't have my camera running when I plugged this in, but as you can see, where I tried to refloat the solder on that transistor, the board caught fire there, burnt up there, kept going up, and uh, basically smoked it, so... My thing is, I'm going to get a replacement board. Hopefully that fixes my set so I can keep using it. That'll be cheaper than replacing the whole TV. Looks like I could get a board for about $100, maybe as low as $80. One that I saw for $60 was a bad board. So I don't understand why they were selling a bad board for $60. Bucks. At any rate, between $80 and $150 you can replace this that's cheaper than getting a $300 TV 
that may not be the quality that this one is. Okay, round two on fixing my plasma TV. That's my old board with the burn marks on it. And even there, here's my replacement part that I got in from eBay today. So I'm going to swap this uh, board over. It's got the same numbers here, here, and down here on the version number. One of those little spots. So I'm going to swap it over, plug it in, turn it on, see if it works. So when you're working on it, electronic components like computers and stuff like that, static electricity in your body could be bad. So you want to ground yourself to the chassis of the item before you start touching any of this electronic stuff so you don't dissipate any electricity on it. Pulled that power board down and man, I got a burn on the back of my plasma. So this thing really blew up the second time and that's the mark on the back of the board that caught fire. So make sure you replace everything that's bad before you try to reinstall it and fire it up or you can end up with more problems. Okay, before you install your replacement board or new board, you want to look at the back of it, make sure it has no evidence of anything burnt. Look at the front of it, make sure it has no evidence of anything burnt. Look at your capacitors, make sure none of them have swollen heads on them. Uh, go ahead, screw it in place, get all your screws started first before you tighten any down. Then plug your plugs in. Make sure you put your hands in a way to support the board when you plug your plugs in. Make sure they're secure. Then after that, uh, you can actually test this without putting it back on. You just need to be careful. So I'm going to hook up the plug and antenna, and then I'm going to hook up the power. Okay, I got my air antenna plugged in, and I believe the last time I simply plugged the plug in, and this thing caught fire. So... I'm going to go ahead and plug it in and see what happened. Hopefully everything is going to be good. Plugged it in. Heard a little click. Nothing seems to be going wrong. So let me go around the other side and turn the power on. Actually the TV turned on so it must have already been powered on. So let me go ahead and set this thing to the air antenna and see how the picture looks. Well, I'm at the air antenna. So far, the picture's looking good. Let me go ahead and change the channel. See if I get any of these channels to tune in. Okay, there's a picture on my air antenna. Seems like it's working fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and install the back. Okay, so I got the back back on. I started the four bolts there, the large ones that hold the wall mount and then I put these four in here then I'll put the ones around the edge in of course just snugging these down not trying to make them tight I don't want to strip nothing then I put one in there now I'm going to set the uh, TV back on the stand and put in these four stand securing bolts then I'm going to hook it back up at its location if you got any questions go ahead and post it if you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.